I'm Joyce Slater. I'm a storyteller. And I'm here. Stories about Thanksgiving. Because you know that's what's coming up pretty soon. We aren't very far off from Thanksgiving now. This is my turkey. Really, it's a turkey hat. Watch this. <laughs> what do you think? Do you think I look like I need a turkey on my head? Nah. But we're going to tell stories and we're going to tell about turkeys. And we're going to tell about turtles and spiders and Thanksgiving dinner and everything that we love to eat for Thanksgiving. So sit back and let's hear some stories. Once upon a time, there was a spider. There was a greedy, greedy spider. Oh my goodness. He loved to eat and eat and eat and eat. He could eat anything. And you know, he looked like he could eat anything because he was big and round. Now, this was a long time ago. It was about Thanksgiving time, though, and Spider was thinking only about having Thanksgiving and how many Thanksgiving dinners he could eat. Why, he wanted to go to a dinner here and here and here and here and here and here. He wanted to go everywhere, but he was only one spider. So, Spider got two invitations to Thanksgiving dinner. He didn't know which to choose. One of them was going to have dancing, and he loved to dance. The other one was going to have singing, and he loved to sing, la, 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 la. Oh, he wasn't very good, no. So which one should he go to? He heard one of them was having turkey and dressing and mashed potatoes and green beans and pumpkin pie. And the other was having ham and yams and and um, uh, turnips and, and was having chocolate cake. And apple pie. Oh my goodness, he loved all those things. He loved them. Which one would he go to? He couldn't make up his mind, so he finally decided what he would do. He got this long, long, long rope and wrapped it around his body. It had a long end going this way and a long end going that way. And he brought his two sons together. And when he did, he said to one son, all right, now I want you to go to that town down there. And when they get through dancing, I want you to tell me when they serve the dinner. Now, the way you're going to do this is you're going to pull on the rope. And I will feel the pull and I'll know to go to that dinner. Well, then he said to his other son, you're going to do the same thing in that town over there. Now, in that town, when they get through singing, tra-la-la-la-la. And they're going to get ready to serve the food you Pull on that rope. All right. He said, then I'll go to that dinner. Well, both sons took off. And the one son, oh, he was dancing and dancing. And then they started to serve the meal. So he got the rope in his hand and he pulled really hard. Well, spiders started to go in that direction. But the other son, well, he had been singing with everybody. Tra -la -la. And then they served the meal and he pulled. But Spider was on his way to that village. They were eating at the same time. One son pulled 
this way. The other son pulled that way. Oh, my goodness. And Spider couldn't get out of the rope. Well, when this son felt a pull in the other direction, he thought Spider was just uh, being lazy. So he pulled harder. And this son then pulled harder. They kept up this pulling until finally they were both so tired. This one over in this village took the end of his rope, wrapped it around and around the tree and tied it off real tight. And this one did the same with a tree in that village. They had pulled them so tight. Spider was in the middle. That rope got tighter and tighter and tighter around his tummy until, oh my goodness, it squeezed him almost in two. And now he had a big part at the bottom and a big part at the bottom and the top. And he had a little tiny waist in the middle, just like spiders do today. You know what, though? He didn't get to eat any Thanksgiving dinner. No. And there he was, tied in the middle, starving. And because of that day, spiders from then on had a tiny waist. And if you look at them, you'll notice they have a big part at the top and a big part at the bottom. And in the middle, they have a tiny, tiny waist. And that's what happened on that day when Spider tried to go to two different Thanksgiving dinners. Don't be like Spider. All right. I have another story for you. Once upon a time, this is Spider also. Once upon a time, there was a turtle and there was a spider. Turtle? Hi, turtle. Hi. I'm turtle. Was walking along. He was walking down the road. It was close to Thanksgiving and he was walking, walking, walking along. He was just having a good time. He was looking up at the sky, looking down at the ground, and he realized he was kind of hungry when he came close to Spider's house. Now, it was the tradition that if somebody came by your house and it was meal time, you would have to share it. And sure enough, Spider was having his Thanksgiving dinner. Turtle could smell something really good being cooked in Spider's house. So he knocked on the door. And Spider said, yes, what do you want? He said, well, I would like to come in and have some dinner. And Spider knew the rules of the land. And he said, all right, but you have to go wash your feet before you can come in my house. So Spider went down to the river and he washed his feet. He washed and washed and washed his feet down at the river. Yes. And then he walked back up through all the dirt on the shore. When he got to Spider's house again, his feet were dirty. Spider, in the meantime, had been eating everything he could on his table because he was very greedy and he liked to save all of his food just for himself. Now, when Turtle got to the door, Spider looked at his feet and said, no, oh, no, you can't come into my house because your feet are dirty. Go back and wash them. I told you to wash your feet. So Turtle, hmm, he looked a little sad. He knew he had washed his feet, but he went back to the river and he washed and washed and washed his feet. And then he walked back to Turtle's house. And in the meantime, Turtle ate and ate and ate until there wasn't much left on that table. He ate all the turkey. He ate almost all the yams. He 
He ate some of the green beans. There was only pumpkin pie left. Now, Turtle had washed his feet and he came back. But he had walked through all that dirt again. And his feet were very dirty. Spider looked at him and said, Nope, you can't come back in my house. You know why? It's because, huh, your feet are dirty. Well, by the time Turtle went back to the river and came back, there was no more food. He was a sad turtle. He walked all the way home and T Spider went back in his house. The turtle remembered that and the next Thanksgiving, why Spider was walking near Turtle's house and he could smell Thanksgiving dinner, but it was coming up from the water. He said, Turtle, Turtle. And Turtle came up and said, yes. What is it? And Turtle and, and Spider said, I think I smell Thanksgiving dinner coming up from the water. Can I come in? Well, of course, he said. Well, when Spider tried to go down under the water to Turtle's house, he floated back up and there he was on top of the water. He couldn't get down into Turtle's house to eat Thanksgiving dinner. Well, Turtle told him, if you just put some rock in your pocket, you can come on down. But when he did that, Spider realized that he wasn't really good underwater. And he might drown. So he took the rocks out of his pocket. He popped back up on top of the water, and off he went, having no Thanksgiving dinner. You know, after that year, they both felt a little bad about Thanksgiving, and the third year, they got together in a neutral place, and they shared all their Thanksgiving food. And that was that. Right? Right? Yeah! And that's what Thanksgiving is all about, isn't it? Sharing and sharing our food. That's right. Once upon a time, there was a little old woman. I think she was even older than I am. And that little old woman lived in a little old house. Now, there had been a famine. Do you know what that means, a famine? There had been no rain, and the crops couldn't grow, and the animals couldn't drink water, and poor people just didn't have anything to eat. They were scrounging for everything. Well, this little old woman, she, she hid her food. She had saved food, put it in jars, and she had packed it away in her pantry, and she didn't tell anyone. Now, Thanksgiving was coming, and she was planning a meal all by herself. But while she was thinking about it, she heard a knock at the door. She thought, it's the people from the village. They've come. There they know I've got food in my pantry. They've come. They're going to take my food. But when she opened the door, there was a stranger. This stranger, he saw, well, he didn't have any food with him. He didn't have much of anything at all. He had a little bag, but it didn't look like it had much in it. He said, I've been walking for miles and miles. Could I rest in your house? Well, she thought, all right, come on in, come on in. You can sit over here by the fire. He said, 
It smells like something has been cooking here. She said, no, 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 I don't have any food at all. I, uh, I, I, you know, there's a famine. I don't have any food at all. He said, oh, well, then thank goodness I brought my rock. She said, your rock? He said, yes, I will make us some soup with this rock. Put a big pot of water on to boil. And she did. And when it got to be very bubbly, he dropped that rock in. He picked up a spoon and he began to stir it. You can stir with me. He stirred and stirred. And then he took a sip. <sniffs> oh, he said, that is really, really good soup. Why, that's good enough to have for Thanksgiving. She said, let me taste it. It is my pot after all. And so she tasted it <coughs> and she thought, well, it's all right. <laughs> he said, you know, it would be a lot better if we had some salt and pepper, maybe an onion or some garlic or something. But what we don't have, well, we won't worry about. So she said, wait a minute. She ran to her pantry and she brought back some salt and some pepper and an onion. And she sprinkled some salt in there and she put some pepper in the pot. And she cut up that onion and put it in the pot. And he said, well, well, he stirred and he stirred and he stirred. And he said, let me taste this soup. And he tasted the soup. He said, oh, my goodness, this soup really is good enough for Thanksgiving. She said, let me taste it. Let me taste it. And so she tasted it. Mmm, <sniffs> she said, this does taste much better. He said, it would taste a lot better if we had some potatoes or carrots, maybe both. But what we don't have, we won't worry about. She said, wait a minute. She went to her pantry and she brought back three potatoes and three carrots and she cut them up and she put them in the water ah he picked up that spoon let's stir it again he stirred and he stirred and he stirred and then he tasted it you can taste it too he said oh the soup is good enough for company she said let me taste it Oh, she said, it is. It's very good soup. Oh, my goodness. It is so good. He said, well, it could be a lot better, you know, if only we had some meat. But what we don't have, we won't worry about. And so she said, wait a minute. And she ran off to her pantry and she brought back some dried meat. She dropped that into the pot. He took the spoon and he stirred and he stirred and he stirred. And then he tasted it. Oh, he said, oh, this is almost good enough to serve the king. Almost. She said, let me taste it. And so she tasted it. Oh, oh. Oh, she said, it is delicious. He said, now, if we just had some cream, that would be good enough for royalty. She said, oh, my goodness, wait a minute. She ran to the pantry and she brought back cream and she poured the cream in. And he said, well, he took the spoon and he stirred and stirred and stirred and he tasted. <laughs> oh, he said. This is delicious. Now, you know, the whole town had been smelling this coming out of her windows. And they were wondering just what this little old woman was doing. Well, she had this big, big pot of soup. She was amazed that he had made this soup just from a rock, a stone. My goodness. So she poured out a bowl for herself and she poured a bowl for him and set it on the table. 
but then she heard knocking at her door. And when she opened it, she found the whole village outside of her house. She invited them all in for Thanksgiving soup. And they all took a bowl of soup and tasted how wonderful it was. It was wonderful. And they sat down and they ate and they laughed and they talked. And they shared that Thanksgiving together. And when it was all done, they cleaned up her house and they left. Now, that night, the woman said, you know, I was going to have you sleep by the fire tonight, but I will sleep there. You have done such a great deed. I want you to sleep in my bed, would you? And he said, oh, of course. And the next morning, she gave him a silver coin. Now, he took that coin and he put it in his pocket. And she said to him, could I have that stone so I could make some of my soup, some of that soup while you're gone? And he said, oh, no, 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 because I must take this with me and I can make soup another day. And that was the story of Stone Soup and Thanksgiving. Now, my final story is about a badger and a fox. Badger and fox lived next door to each other. They were neighbors. And every day they would say, hi, hi. They would wave to one another. But they didn't do much else. And one year... Fox said to Badger, you know what we could do? There is an empty plot of land. We could grow a garden together. And then we would have food for the winter and even for Thanksgiving. Well, Badger thought it over. He'd never grown any crops before. He didn't really know how to do this. But he agreed. And they both agreed they would water, they would weed, and then they would harvest at the end of the season. And Badger said, well, we just divide it down the middle and you get this half and I get this half. And Fox said, hmm, I'll tell you what, you take everything that's on top of the land and I'll take everything that's under the land, under the ground. Well, Badger agreed. They planted Potatoes, potatoes. At the end of the season, it was ready to harvest. And Badger looked at those scraggly green things on top of the ground and said, this doesn't look very good. Well, Fox said, this is what you agreed to. You would take everything on top. I would take everything on the bottom. He said, I know. Well, they dug it all up, and underneath were these wonderful potatoes. And Fox took a huge basket of them home. He didn't share even one with Badger. Badger knew he'd been tricked. So the next year, when Fox came to him and said, let's plant another garden, Badger said, oh, no, no, no. You fooled me last year. He said, all right, all right. I admit I fooled you last year. This year, why don't you take what's underground, on the bottom, and I'll take what grows on top. Well, Badger thought, all right, that will work. So they planted, they weeded, they watered corn. Oh, yes. It grew and grew and grew and grew. And then these ears started coming out all over those corn stalks. 
at the end of the season, yes, Fox had bushel baskets of corn and Badger had straggly little roots. Oh, Badger was not happy. He said, I am not going to be tricked again. And he went away. He wasn't happy at all. He didn't have any food for Thanksgiving, and he didn't have any food once more for the winter. So the next year when Fox came to him, he said, no, no, no. I am not going to plant a garden with you again. He said, well, I tell you what. You can decide what we plant, and you can decide if you want the top or the bottom. And so Badger agreed, and that year they planted turnips. They planted them, they watered them, they weeded them. And at the end of the season, Badger took home bag after bag after bag of turnip greens and they were delicious and fox took home all the turnips from under the ground and you know when he took them to his family for thanksgiving they didn't like turnips and neither did he but badger Love those turnip greens that he cooked up for Thanksgiving dinner. And he was very happy. Now, you know, after that year, Fox and Badger never planted a garden again. Not together. Fox planted his own garden and Badger planted his own garden. And sometimes, they shared the food. And sometimes they shared Thanksgiving. And they stayed neighbors for a long, long time. And each day, Fox would wave to Badger and Badger would wave to Fox. Good neighbors to the end. Now, those are my Thanksgiving stories about food, Thanksgiving, turkeys, sharing, and love. And you know that turkey hat I had on at the beginning? Well, that was the before turkey. This is the one you see on Thanksgiving Day. Yes, all dressed out. So put on your, your pilgrim hat and celebrate Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to each and every one of you, and have a good day. Bye.